Hey there, it's Mitzi. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about some of the short stories I have been reading so far during the month of May. If you follow my channel, you know that I am hosting a short story readathon along with Karina from What Brings Karina Joy and Chantel from Chantel Reads All Day. And I'll leave links to everybody's announcement videos and all the prompts and things um, below. But there is a bingo card that you can fill out for this. So I will also leave a link to that where all the prompts are. Don't worry about that though if you are pressed for time. If you just read one short story, you have participated. We just want to make this a fun time of celebrating short stories and maybe you will find a new author in the process, a new uh, favorite author in the process. So this week, this past week, I tried to just read one short story a day but I couldn't stop there. I actually read several short stories throughout the week and I thought I would just talk a little bit about that. Now I have been looking at the bingo card and one thing, oh, the first square in the bingo card is 1800s and I read several for that. Uh, the first was a couple of books from this collection. This is the complete short story collection of Mark Twain and when I was in school we read a lot of Mark Twain. We read a lot of the short stories as well as several of his novels. So I'm familiar with Mark Twain but I don't to be honest, I don't remember a lot of the short stories. So I thought I would just start going through these. I found this beautiful copy at, um, I think, an estate sale or thrift store or something for a little uh, nothing. And I just love these beautiful um, hardcover copies. And I love that they're all right here. I have the O. Henry set like this as well. But what I like about this set is when you read the stories... Let me see if I can turn to the end of one. At the very end of each story, you find out the year it was published. So that would help you with whether or not it's from the 1800s or the 1900s. I don't know if you can see that, but right up in the, um, right up underneath that last sentence of that story is the, the year 1865. So it's done that way all the way through this book. So the first short story by Mark Twain was published in 1865 and when you get to the end that last one was published in 1916. So that lets me know if it's an 1800s or a 1900s and so I've only read the first couple of short stories. I was already familiar with those but as I was reading them I thought about this also works for humor. So if you're looking for a short story to fulfill the humor satire um, prompt, you could look to, to Mark Twain because his stories are a lot of comedy and funny things in his story. So that would work for that. Um, I also, for the 1800s, let's see if I can find it, um, read the first book in this set from Oscar Wilde, The Happy Prince and Other Stories. I received this sweet little copy uh, for Christmas this past year. And so I read The Happy Prince, and it was such a great story. If you haven't read that one, I recommend it. But it would work well for 1800s. It's by Oscar Wilde, so I don't know if you've ever read Oscar Wilde. For me, it also could work for From Another Country, but I'm just reading a bunch for, for the 1800s right now. This story is, um, The Happy Prince is about a statue, a golden statue that sits above the town, the village, and it was in memory of the Happy Prince, a, a prince that had died, and they, they had this statue built of gold that overlooked the city. So one day this bird comes to find shelter underneath the statue and realizes that the Happy Prince, the statue of the Happy Prince, is not so happy. It's very sad. And so he has this conversation with the Happy Prince, and he finds out that the prince had a wonderful happy life while he was living because he was sheltered from the things of the city. But once he died and this statue was erected, now that he could see, overlook the city, he could see all the poverty, all the social injustices, and the, the sadness within the city. So it made him sad because there was nothing he could do about it. So the story goes on with the this bird helping the happy prince by plucking out like a sapphire or a ruby or something from the statue to go help the needy and the poor in the uh, village or the city. 
it's a beautiful story. The ending was perfect for me. I just thought it was a beautiful story. So I really enjoyed that one. If you're looking for something for 1800s or if you just wanted to try something by Oscar Wilde, I have this set and I also have the Canterville Ghost and other stories. I've read the Canterville Ghost and it's a good one too. And that would work for a movie adaptation because they made a movie of that one. So this was a good one. Um, another one that I read, uh, I started the... James Thurber, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, and other stories. Now, I have not read The Secret Life of Walter Mitty because we're going to read that one together. So I'm saving it so it'll be fresh on my mind. But I did read the first couple of stories in this one. Well, several of the stories in here. The first one's called The Lady on the 142. And the next box under 1800s was Number in the Title. So I'm going to use that for Number in the Title, Lady on 142. Uh, it was a funny little story. I didn't realize that <clears throat> James Thurber was actually a cartoonist. So his stories are funny as well. So you could use this for comedy as well. <clears throat> but my favorite one so far is called... Let's see what that one's called. Um... The Macbeth Murder Mystery. <laughs> that one was super cute. It's about a lady who is obsessed with reading murder mysteries. And she's like an Agatha Christie type fan. Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie. She loves those murder mysteries. And so she goes to, to pick up another murder mystery. And she picks up, I think it's a penguin. And you know how a lot of the penguins have the same cover. So she assumes it's a murder mystery, but it's actually Macbeth, Shakespeare's Macbeth. So when she gets at home, she don't have anything else to read but Macbeth. So she reads it as a whodunit story. And it's just a comical look at Macbeth and the conversation's really funny in that one too. So uh, if you do pick up the stories for James Thurber since we're reading The Secret Life of Walter Meaty, I do suggest the Macbeth murder mystery. That was really a cute one in here. And that works for number in the title. Um, a favorite author of mine is Flannery O'Connor. I've mentioned this one before. If you follow my channel, you know this is like my favorite complete set of short stories by Flannery O'Connor. It's my favorite short story set that I have. And so I uh, read one in here that's one of her more famous ones, A View of the Woods. That one is a really great example of her writing if you have, are not familiar with her. Um, I usually say A Good Man is Hard to Find, but most people have read that one. So if you have, um, I think it's called A View of the Woods. Let me make sure. Yeah, A View of the Woods. That's one of her more famous ones as well, and it's a really good one. So I just read that one as a favorite author selection. But I do plan on reading more from here just because I love picking this up from time to time. And then, um, so I did humor, a favorite author, because a couple of these have been humor. Um, and then for fantasy, I was thinking about, I haven't read this one yet, but I, I'm thinking about reading this one for fantasy, um, because I read an allegory by him. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote Tanglewood Tales, and those are short stories that he wrote for kids that are, um, I think it's Greek mythology retelling, so that could definitely work for fantasy because a lot of fantasy has the mythology woven into it, so I thought that could work for that. And I had picked that book up not too long ago, well, it's been several months now, at a secondhand bookstore, and I haven't read those, so I think I'm going to use that for that one. But the book that I was most surprised by by Nathaniel Hawthorne, I mean the short story, was Young Goodman Brown. I read this and was so surprised at how much I enjoyed reading this. Um, I've, I've heard of this for a very long time, but it's about Goodman Brown who goes off, he leaves his wife one night, to go off on this trip. He doesn't tell her where he's going, but you can tell that he's going to do something he shouldn't be doing. Now, he do, she doesn't know that, but she she warns him. She's like, I just don't feel good about this. I want you to stay home. And he's like, uh, you know, she's worried that something bad's going to happen to her. And so he tells her, well, say your prayers and go to bed early and no harm will come to you. So then he goes off into the forest, the woods, which I love the way that the forest is used symbolically in the story as well. That worked really well for this. Uh, but he gets there and as he goes... I don't want to say too much about it because, again, it's a short story. But he has changed forever. Once he has 
I don't know if it's a dream, it's really not explained, or if he has a vision or what it is in this forest. But after he, this experience in the forest, when he comes back, he is a changed man. And it's a, a life-changing traumatic experiences, experience in the woods that just changes him forever and not in a good, good way. So I, I really enjoyed this one. I was surprised at how much I did. This would be a great one for a discussion because it has a lot of symbolism. And again, it's an allegory. So, so far, I think this this one and The Happy Prince have been my favorite reads so far. I also picked up, um, now I'm going out of order now, but I also picked up The Glorious American Essay because I talked about reading through these. And I read the first two. The first was Cotton Mather's Of Poetry and of Style. It was okay. I just, it wasn't too much to me. Um, but the second one I loved, and it was a reread of Jonathan Edwards' Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And I remember studying that in high school, so it was nice to revisit that one. Uh, I will say, though, when you when you listen to that sermon, um, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, you think about, wow, <laughs> what would it have been like to be in that congregation as he preached that sermon? Because I'm sure people were crying and crawling to the altar after hearing... Um, the fire and brimstone uh, sort of sermon that that he shares there it's a totally different kind of sermon than what we hear today so that's a good one to look at if you want to um, read an essay that's a a pretty famous sermon and so if you're interested in reading some something from jonathan edwards that's a great place to start I also read a book that I checked out from the library for fairy tales, and that is Hans Christian Andersen's The Red Shoes and Other Tales, and it says Metafrog, so I'm assuming that is who did the illustrations on this one. This was made into a graphic novel, and it includes The Red Shoes, so The Red Shoes, The Glass Case, and The Little Match Girl, and I didn't like this book. <laughs> I didn't like any of the stories, and I didn't like the anything about it. The pictures are nice, but it's done in a modern retelling. Um, I just did not like it. <laughs> I put it on Instagram that this was awful. And I hate to say it, but I just, I don't know what it is about graphic novels, but I did read one recently, Animal Farm, that I absolutely loved. So those are the types that I really love, but this just was not a hit for me. It was a miss, definitely. But I will be looking at some more um, fairy tales. I do have this book that I've had a long time, and I have only read a few of the, the stories in here, so I decided to just go through and just read it in order and just go through it. And again, this is where I've been reading a lot of short stories. I've read pretty much one every day, and it's Celtic Tales, Fairy Tales and Stories of Enchantment from Ireland, Scotland, Brittany, and Wales. And it's a beautiful book. It has a beautiful illustration at the beginning of each um, short story. And each one has one of these beautiful pictures. And then it goes on to, to uh, share the story. And it's set up, and it's divided into categories. The first category is tricksters, the sea, quests, rom and romance. And I'm on the sea, so I have read one, two, three, four, five, six. I've read eight stories so far, and so far the two stories in the C section, the C, um, it was two stories that I've read there have been my favorite. The first stories were okay, but they weren't as good as the C, and, which I like stories about the C, so maybe that's why, but I look forward to reading all of these. They're super quick little fairy tale stories. I do like fairy tales, and these are, there's... There's elements of fairy tales that I know, but they're done in a totally different way, and I like that about it. So if you um, want something totally different, you might want to pick up Celtic Tales. I know that there's like several of these in this um, that this publisher put out. I'm not sure who this is, but I do want to pick up some more of these. So these are the books that I have been choosing from uh, collections. Oh, and there was one other. I read Flowers in the Rain from this collection by Roseman Pilcher. And it is, it was a great one too. So I do plan on picking up some more Roseman Pilcher because Roseman Pilcher and Flannery O'Connor could work for Written by a Woman because I have that as one of our uh, prompts as well. 
So those are the uh, short stories that I have been reading. Uh, probably my favorite was The Happy Prince and Young Goodman Brown. Those two really stand out for me. Um, reading these and rereading some old favorites for this week. What have you been reading? Have you been participating in the short story readathon? Let me know that in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.